green mass, CO2 is not harmful. It's a vital life source. These are marine microalgae, or algae, grown in a saline solution. Scientist Georg Wichers is based at the largest experimental algae growing complex near Aachen in western Germany. When they're given extra CO2, the algae grow ten times faster than in their normal environment. And they even thrive on power plant emissions. Those emissions come from the neighboring coal-fired power plant, which releases mainly steam and carbon dioxide, or CO2. Coal is burned here to generate electricity, and the greenhouse gas CO2 is a byproduct. Scientists recently began diverting the gas from the 200 meter cooling tower. The energy company RWE wants to reduce its carbon dioxide emissions by storing it underground or by feeding it to the algae. We've been operating for around a year and we already have initial results. The first thing we studied was whether this type of algae technology could be used with waste gas from a coal power plant. And we found it works very well. The basic research for the project is carried out at the nearby Julich Research Center. Biologist Ulrich Schur wants to know at which point the process becomes economically viable. He studies how much CO2 the algae absorb, which conditions are best suited to growth, and when they have to be harvested. Algae are a kind of wild plant. They come from nature and are not designed to grow in tubes like these. They grow in the ocean or in lakes. We're growing them under artificial conditions. And in this environment, algae from the sea won't thrive optimally. So we have to develop both the technical side, that is, our photobioreactors, and the algae on the molecular biochemical side to come up with an optimal system. One improvement has been the special frosted glass that allows ultraviolet light to shine on the algae. But the most important aspect is the relationship between the amounts of microalgae, nutrients and CO2. This mixture determines the efficiency of the photosynthesis reaction, with which the algae turn the CO2 into carbohydrates. The scientists want to automate this process. Because of the sheer mass of algae, they require a computer to control the parameters. Every step of the growth process is studied using an electron microscope. The scientists calculate the exact quantity of CO2 consumed by the algae at each stage. This is a very exciting system. It takes the basic research on photosynthesis and the structure of algae's photosynthetic system and it links it to a practical application. We're seeing ways of using these systems to find new applications and actually go into sustainable production. Building this bridge between basic research and practical application is something very exciting. This process will never make the power plant carbon neutral. The amount of algae required would be simply too large. But it is a way of reducing CO2 emissions. And if the CO2 from the smokestacks is carefully scrubbed, the algae themselves could be used as biofuel, as biomass for building materials, or in nutritional supplements. The greenhouse complex the company has set up next to its power plant grows enough algae for a host of possible applications. <laughs>